Today on Garden Fork, learn how to install and hook up a portable generator. Stay tuned. It's the end of the day. This is our generator. We bought this in the middle of summer at a home improvement store. We got it on sale. I think somebody bought it used it and returned it. And so they brought it out on the floor and they cut, knocked down the price on it. You have a couple choices to how to put a generator or hook up a generator to your house. You can have one of those big kind that sit in a metal box that sit on a cement slab and are hardwired into your house and have what's called an automatic transfer switch. We don't have one of those. Those work really well, but they're quite expensive. They're run by gas, diesel. Propane. And propane. Our neighbors have propane ones around here. This is the kind where you basically roll it out of your garage, or we have a walkout basement, so we roll it out of the basement. You fire it up, and you plug it into your, your house's electrical system using what's called a manual transfer switch. Uh, this is a lot more affordable if you're thinking about having a backup generator for your house. The number one rule with these generators is do not run them inside your basement or inside your garage, because it will kill you. Uh, these produce carbon monoxide. You can't smell carbon monoxide and it will kill you and your family. Every time there's a big storm, we hear about a family that has died because they're running a generator in their basement. So just please don't do that, okay? Before you go and buy a generator, you have to figure out what it is in your house you want to power when your power is out. Do you run a one, do you have a deep freezer, a refrigerator? Microwave. A microwave, shower. coffee machine, shower. shower. Do you have electric hot water? You know, electric hot water heater, water heater for hot water. I get in trouble when I say that. But anyway, so what you need to do is go around your house and look usually on the side or the back of all your appliances. It's going to say how many watts or amps it draws. And you have to do a little math. So go through your house and figure out what it is you want to run. You're probably not going to be able to run an electric dryer on one of these smaller generators like this. But you can run a blow dryer, you know, a hair dryer, coffee machine, microwave. TV? TV you can run. You can't run an electric oven. Um, but do some math, and then I have a chart. A math chart? It's like an eye chart. Pretty cool, huh? Just remember that watts equals volts times amps. And you can kind of cheat on this because it's, it's nominally 120 volts, but you can just assume, you can just knock it down to 100 volts so basically, amps times 100 gives you your watts in a very rough way. And that's going to give you a very good idea of how powerful of a generator you need. This is a 6,500 watt generator, and it runs our refrigerator, our furnace. We have an oil-fired furnace. Uh, it runs the coffee machine, the, the microwave, the television, the stereo. We don't have a television. Well, we did. <laughs> Uh, it'll run our computers and most of the lights in the house. On 6,500 watts, it's a 14 horsepower engine on here. So you don't need a giant thing. The 6,500 watt one is really affordable too. The other thing you're going to need is a manual transfer switch. You have to be very careful how you're hooking up the generator to your home electrical system. This is another way you can store your generator outdoors. This is, we're at a neighbor's house and he got one of these big plastic outdoor container things. I don't know what you call them, storage units. But the cool thing is, is you open this up. Wow. I'm like on one of those game shows. <laughs> and you have a nice generator here. So you don't, like we keep ours in our basement and we roll it out or but this one, you've got it. This is a porch. He's got a nice enclosed place here. Oh, sorry, Charlie. He's got his cord. So he pulls this out. You don't run it in here. Pull it out, fire it up, and plug it in. We'll do this all day. Let's get rid of the ball. There you go. This is your outdoor weatherproof receptacle for your outdoor generator. This is plugged into your generator. And this opens up. See this gasket makes it weatherproof here? This will only go on one way. There's a notch on one of the prongs here. And if I had my glasses, I could see this, but this. It goes on and then you turn it. You give it just a little bit of a turn, like an eighth inch turn. 
and you're set up. But this is really important to have a weatherproof outdoor electrical outlet. Don't kind of do this in a, I can't, a polite way of saying, don't do this in a bad, in a cheap way, okay? I always put gasoline stabilizer in the gasoline going into the generator. A couple of reasons. It extends basically the shelf life of gasoline. So when your generator has been sitting for a couple of months and you have gasoline sitting in the carb, first of all, this keeps the gasoline from gunking up the carb, and second, the engine will start right up, which is a really nice thing in the middle of winter. All right, so your power has gone off. What do you do? Ah! Take your generator, take it outside, plug the extension cord from, or the stinger I call it, from the generator into your outdoor receptacle and fire it up. And it'll make, it'll sound like a lawnmower going on. Then you come down to the basement here and here's your panel. And you can flip these switches. Right now we're on line power and when we switch them over, you will be turning the generator you are having sending generator power onto these circuits. Oh, I just uh, turned off the computer. <laughs> these are great, by the way. When the power goes out, you just put this on and you can see again. <laughs> no, they're really nice. Um, you might not want to be running your generator 24 seven. You might want to, we turn it on and we then we run the furnace, we run the refrigerator and all that kind of thing. And then sometimes when we read, we just have the little headlamp on instead of having the generator running. So. Like dorks. Yeah, but it works. <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering now, well, Eric, how do I hook up my transfer panel to my circuit breaker panel? It depends on the model and make and the manufacturer, but they all come with instructions and a lot of them come with a video, which is really nice. It also, they also have online help. If you're not exactly sure, hire an electrician, okay? Just be super, super careful around an electrical panel here. But what you're doing is you're bringing a snake of wires in here and for each circuit that you want served by the generator or the utility power, you're doing a little wiring in there. But it depends on which one you're using. I've done a couple of these and they're all a little different. 